Welcome everyone to the Zeke webinar series. Today we have Benjamin Banner and Keith Jones from Corelight. We'll be talking about Spicy 1.0. Uh, so for those of you who registered and joined, apologies for the confusion on the registration link early on, but we're glad that you made it here today. This recording will also be available uh, after the presentation. With that, uh, Benjamin and Keith, can you take a moment and introduce yourselves to the audience? Yes, hi. My name is Benjamin. I work at Corelight since about a, like a year ago. I joined Robin working on Spicy, basically, and have been doing that ever since. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Keith Jones. Uh, I worked at Corelight a couple of years. I work in the um, research group, and I just started working on Spicy recently, just out of necessity of uh, doing research that I was doing from day to day. Thank you both for your willingness to present. And with that, Benjamin, the floor is yours to tell everyone about SPICY. Yeah, so we will do this in two parts. I'll give you some um, overview, basically, and Keith will go into practical applications. So Keith's name is not on the slide here, but Keith will present after me. So let's look, take a step back and look how, how one does pr protocol analysis in Zeek. For example, finding downloads of known malware. One would find and pass the web traffic, find and extract the binaries inside that traffic, then compute hashes and compare them against some database, and then trigger some reporting or some reporting or some, some kind of, of reaction, right? And um, web traffic is, um, I mean, this involves like um, multiple steps, basically, right? So Zeek will. I mean, there would be some traffic between a client and the server. And for example, this client would request some document and the server would send back some response and a status. And um, Zeek then would allow you to see that some connection gets established between two hosts. Then it would um, extract um, uh, that TCP stream between these two hosts and um, reassemble it. And um, for example, give you an HTTP request and also do the same for the responder side trigger or tag and reply and also detect that the connection is, is finished ultimately. So what we have here is like in this example, if I start from a PCAP, we have five protocols here. We have, I would, we have, would have a PCAP, then we would on top of that reconstruct some ethernet traffic, some IP traffic, some TCP traffic, and then some HTTP traffic, right? So we have um, a layering of protocols and um, well supported by by Zeek and Zeek currently has so this is might be I mean I guess it's about right that number currently there's about 45 popular in quotes protocols included in Zeek that you can layer in such a way but the real world unfortunately has a very long tail of of for example environment specific protocols which are missing in Zeek and um, adding analyzers is not trivial because Two years ago, you would, need, would use some mix of bin pack and C++ code that you would need to write, and you would have your analyzer interface directly with Zeek scripts and C++ APIs. So this is um, a lot of, um, I mean, it goes very, becomes very hard very quickly, right? So another idea that Robin and other folks started is um, developing a high level scripting language for parsing. And the goal would be to give users a robust language where you can at the same time express some, um, some um, structure and syntax of protocols and some logic without people needing to write C++. And it should be efficient so you can pass many concurrent connections without incurring like high latency or, or memory overhead. And it should be easily integratable into Zeek. So SPICY was started as a research prototype. And um, last time I presented a sim similar slide deck, we had um, beta version out, but we, this morning, I think we, we re publicly released SPICY 1.1. So we have spent some work on improving SPICY and making it more, I mean, ready basically for prime time. Spicy is under permissive, released under permissive BSD license, and we are on, can find us in the GitHub Zeek org. We have a, a, a spicy Slack channel in the Zeek, spicy, uh, Zeek Slack. Yeah. 
So let's let's go over some some quick um, toy. Well, no. Yeah, let's go over some quick toy examples. So first, you would install install Spice here, right? So we have um, we spent lots of actually lots of effort for in preparing and uh, making it kind of easy to install um, Spice. So we have um, Debian packages, RPMs. We have um, pre-compiled binaries for for some other platforms. We have a homebrew formula. We have Docker containers. So here I show you two ways how you would install Spicy. You could just brew install Spicy, which would get you a 1.0 basically immediately. Or you could run a Docker image that we have up. And like I said, there's like big section actually in the documentation that shows you other ways to, in to install or Spicy or even build it yourself if you want. Right. So what we want to do is we want to look at a simple protocol. So it's TFTP protocol, which is basically it's some, it's a very, I mean, it's a, it's a protocol to transfer files and it's kind of simple. So we have um, two requests basically that we want to look at. We have a read request. So a client asks a server or requests a read on some file on the server. And then the server would, for example, respond with a set of packages and then finally close off that connection or similar write request, which flips that around where a client tells the server that it wants to upload or, or write a file to to the server right so these are the flows that we would want to analyze so you see there would be multiple packages involved here that would be sent back and forth and um, they would have different structure as well right so let's look at this at the write or read request package how that looks like so we would have some opcode some file name some some transfer mode and um, and some padding in the middle and we would in spicy um, express that pretty much directly as a, a unit type. So what you see is that there's some some uh, one field for um, operation, which is an UN16 that corresponds to two bytes at the beginning of the packet, and then a read request, which um, we have broken out into another unit, like on the bottom, right? So this would be two sets of bytes. We have we have support some like. A, pretty, I mean, a growing set of, of attributes. And um, we here we use an attribute that will pass until we encounter a, a null byte in the input stream. And we use that to extract the file name and the mode. And again, in the packet above, you also see that we have um, ways to hook in other actions. So here we have a done hook, which is um, triggered when such a unit is, we have finished parsing such a unit basically. So we would go through, pass the opcode file name, mode, terminating zero, and then we would print out that unit to the, to the terminal in this way. Right? We can, I mean, we have richer sets. So we like, we have some um, of, of features. So we have a um, write and read request, which share some structure, right? They have identical structure. So we can actually use that. If you look at the bottom, opcode, we have some enum type, for example, which encodes like the different um, tags that these packages use to identify themselves. So we encode that as an enum, can pass that as an, we pass the UN16 in the packet, and then we convert that to an enum. So we don't have, a, we suddenly have given that, that UN16 number semantics. And then we can, with another construct here, the switch statement. So this will inject two fields actually. So this will in inject an RRQ field for a read request or WRQ field for a write request. And one of these will be set depending on what which opcode we passed on the top, right? So we we like gradually went from just describing some static structure to some uh, something more dynamic. That switch statement, and we have other other. Um, um, packet types in, in, T, in the TFTP protocol, which we can also express um, pretty simply. So I'll just skip over this quickly. Oops, what happened to my slides? Ah, okay, and once we have done that, we are we end up with this. So this is the spicy grammar for parsing TFTP packets, right? And we are, we are done. So what do we do with that, right? So here I have taken some like a PCAP of a TFTP read request in Wireshark on the top, you see. So like the lowest layer here, you see that there's a read request, opcode one, some file name and some 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 mode. And um, I can feed that. So I extracted the payload of that lowest layer and I can feed that directly into 
Spicy. So Spicy comes with a program Spicy Driver, which takes um, takes some some grammar and then just in time compiles that into a, a parser that can accept input. And in this case, we just cat that um, data to the Spicy Driver. It will pass, and then by this um, by the done hook where we printed the unit, we see what we passed here, right? So we see we indeed extract some read requests, some file name, and some mode. Or we can um, more realistically also um, pre-compile that instead of recompiling every time we want to pass something, we can have a program called spicy C, which is spicy compiler, which here in this case jits to some final parser, outputs that to some output file, in this case, some, some HLTO file, and then we can reuse that file by, for example, um, passing it to spicy driver, right? Instead of having spicy driver recompile every time, right? So we have neat framework for, for parsing um, data here. So how do we integrate that into Zeek? So Zeek protocol analyzers, that, so there's also packet analyzers actually. So, but um, Zeek analyzers, they, typically analyze, Zeek, Zeek protocol analyzes, analyze data submitted over some transport protocol and port, and then they emit events, right? So this is what we want to do. So what we can do here is that we can again use hooks. So I showed you this hook that was just printing out some past traffic, we can use that to hook into Zeek. So, so you see some spicy code here, right? So this is spicy code. And in this case, we have, um, declare two, hook, uh, like two hooks, done hook and error hook. And we don't, in this case, don't define them inside the unit, but we can also define them outside. And um, so when we pass a TFTP um, request, we would confirm that we are indeed the protocol that we were configured for here. Or we can, when we encounter some error, some pass error, that we are not that kind of protocol, right? So we. Still need to hook that into Zeek, but um, this already, um, yeah, I mean, this is already the way how we would connect <laughs> these two parts, right? So, but one other piece is missing. We need to also trigger some um, Zeek functionality from from um, from our parser, right? So for that, we have a, an extra glue layer where we can um, actually declare what kind of analyzer and certain spicy grammar corresponds to. So here in this case, we would declare a protocol analyzer named spicy TFTP, which analyzes UDP traffic and um, uses a certain parser defined in that grammar and some port. And um, so in this case, the protocol and the port and the name is something Zeek would use to, to integrate um, that parser. And uh, we can also trigger Zeek events from, from, um, from this um, glue code. In this case, if we, for example, pass a request that is a read request, we could trigger some elsewhere defined event called um, read request or write request or data acknowledgement error, right? So this is some Zeek code. So on the, on the left-hand side of these arrows, you see spicy code or some, yeah, some spicy code. On the left-hand, uh, right-hand side, you see Zeek code. And this bridges, um, I mean, it's the final piece to, to bridge spicy or to integrate spicy in, into Zeek. And um, to actually compile that into a Zeek module, you would install a different um, tool, like a, a Zeek plugin, which is called Spicy Plugin. And then you can use a tool provided by that um, module, by that plugin to um, compile the the spicy grammar, the glue code, and the spicy code into some Zeek module, right? So that's like second line here. Spicy Z would be the tool that does that um, translation. And then you can load that, for example, load that into Zeek to analyze TFTP traffic. So that I haven't shown here, but um, I mean, I haven't shown you the output, but we, we load some HLTO file here and some Zeek file, and then we can use that to analyze that PCAP file I'm passing. Okay, okay, and that's like I showed you some some gradual um, shift from like very static um, description of that grammar to more dynamic features like that switch statement, converting things, and the spicy has 
like additional features that make it uh, um, more like a programming language than a language where we, we would just describe like the structure statically, right? For example, we have lists here in this case, we, we can express parsing a list up to a certain count. It's pretty natural. We have regular expression support, which you would use, for example, for something like HTTP traffic. Very powerful feature is um, syncs. So syncs are a way to connect different units to each other. So you would have some parser ingesting traffic and then transforming it and passing, uh, passing it to an, another unit as a sync, which then could um, again analyze that. So you could use that to, I mean, this is a very powerful tool here. So in this case, this example here removes some length field, for example, and then triggers. So the, the top unit basically passes some, some length field and some data and the unit we connect to just wants to pass a GET request, for example, right? So we don't have to concern ourselves in that type, in that unit B with um, length fields if we don't want to. And you can use that to build um, layers and layers of um, abstractions, whatever's useful for you. You can also do some imperative programming. You can, for example, just um, create functions, for example, that you can use. So, so here we sum a vector, right? So this would all be jitted and then you can, can sum. So we are on, like I mentioned on, in the Zeek um, GitHub org, so there's some installation methods. So like for Mac users, you would just brew install spicy, but there's many more in the docs and, and please look and let us know if something's not working, but there should be something for everybody. We have the Zeek plugin out in the, Zeek package index, and we also have a set, a growing set of spicy, of analyzers for Zeek written in spicy, which are in the packet spicy analyzers. So this TFTP example, for example, lives in that repo. And now I would hand over to Keith to show you more practical stuff. Yep, that's actually, hello everybody. <clears throat> that's actually a good segue because um, what I'm gonna be talking about, that last line there, the spicy analyzers, that's the repo that I'm gonna be, um, referencing into a lot here. So let me get you my screen. Okay. All right, you should have some slides up. If you're not seeing them, please feel free, somebody to tell me. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and continue here. So if you check the, um, uh, the chat room of um, this webinar, I put a uh, bit.ly link in there and I also put them on the slides here just so it'd be easy because I'm gonna have a lot of URLs in my slide and they're really long and I don't want anybody furiously trying to write them down or screen capture um, because you can go back and look at the code that I'm talking about later through these URLs. And if you just go to that link and go to my slides, all these links, pretty much all these links are clickable and you can go straight to the code that I'm gonna be walking you through. All right, so my agenda is, I just wanna talk about, uh, all this stuff is gonna be very briefly because it's OpenVPN. It's probably a medium scale um, difficulty level for um, filling out uh, a, a uh, protocol analyzer, IPsec probably being the most difficult and WireGuard probably being uh, the most easy. Um, so I wanna go through it and talk a little bit about why, what what difficulties are there um, and then very briefly talk about what it was, when I made the parser in bin pack, how did it come to be? You know, what, what what's in different files and so forth. And then lastly, where the meat of this is, I wanna get into, all right, let, now that you know what OpenVPN is, you know that bin pack is, I'm gonna, spoiler alert, bin pack is a lot harder than spicy. Now that you know that it's more difficult, I'm gonna show you some um, spicy examples at the end and hopefully you'll get an appreciation of um, how much faster it is to write these things in spicy. All right, so what is OpenVPN? Here's, I'm gonna start with my links uh, that you can look at offline. Uh, but I wrote two blogs uh, on, the, on um, developing these parsers. The first one was the bin pack version. So I'm gonna give you a very high level overview in here, but this blog, if you were to click into it and read it, it's pages upon pages of um, the details of the protocol and links to the code and so forth. Uh, the second blog there is just the simple process of kind of what I'm walking you through today of I have something in bin pack and now I wanna make it in spicy. And then for the real diehard to put down there, the technical documentation that I use to uh, develop these things. So at the core, an OpenVPN usually, or OpenVPN will send messages. And in the beginning of that message is something they call an opcode. And an opcode is just 
you can think of it as what Benjamin was saying with the enum, it has some value and that value has meaning. And I just, for my blog article, just to cut and paste here, these are the different opcodes that OpenVPN defines, one through nine. And there's a few here um, that are of the same set. If you see the P control, those are, you're gonna hear me talk about control messages. That's a control message. So there's different types of control messages. You can see there's control, hard reset, control reset server, soft reset, and then there's the version twos down at the bottom. Um, and then there's the control V1 here as well. And then there's gonna be two other sets of um, messages. The next one's gonna be the ACK. And if you're familiar with TCP, you're, you know what the ACK is. It's the same thing here. Um, this is gonna be, traditionally, this is used over UDP, even though we can use it over TCP. So there has to be some mechanism to say um, that we received something. And then the last, uh, section is going to be the data or the, the last category is going to be the data types and you're going to have a data one and data two. So I'm going to walk through uh, each of these very briefly. The control messages have the most meat. It has things like um, you can imagine when one computer is talking to another it, uh, to set up a VPN, it has some important administrative information like the session ID because you can have, um, you know, different users setting up different VPNs and different routes and so forth. Um, there's an optional HMAC information, so you can actually have um, some authentication. Um, you can either enable or disable some authentication up front on the TLS portion. And then they have um, some structures in here where they will acknowledge packets that they've re received previously, just like I was talking about with the uh, TCP. It's going to work the same way in OpenVPN. It's going to say, hey, I got such and such. And if the other side finds it missing, it's just going to end up retransmitting it. <clears throat> and then um, third line from the bottom, you see there's the if statement there. Even if you don't know what any of this stuff is, just know we're saying this thing exists if this other thing is greater than zero. And this is where, um, spi in, in spicy terms, this is very, very easy uh, to do. And then um, just fill out the rest of the fields down there. We have packet ID and then data. And then depending on which control type it is, you might have data or you might not have data. Trolls um, are gonna fill out all the fields across the top. All right, and I think I already talked about most of this. The ACK and the data messages are just the other two uh, category types. Um, they have less information. They have less amount of fields in there, um, but you'll see that I actually do parse them. And then if you say, oh, I've never seen what these things look like before. Well, I've got some open VPN PCAPs. Um, again, if you click into the slides, I've got the link directly to the spicy analyzer test traces. And I put four of them in there and you probably wonder why are there four of them? Well, I will explain that in a minute. <clears throat> what I do want to do is show you uh, what one of them looks like. And this is, I think this is the first one that I ever captured and started looking at. I just generated this. Um, I think it was uh, private internet access, uh, .com. I just used their open VPN tool and generated this and it did it over, uh, I don't see it on here, but I think it was port 1198. Uh, if you really want to know what it is, it's that PCAP in this slide before I showed you. But you can see in here, I highlighted what is a handshake. And they all start with this reset client, reset server. And it's something that we can easily search for on the wire. Um, we can do that with um, the DPD signatures because I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to show you the actual signatures later on. They're very simple. Um, because we know where certain bytes are, we can then trigger on any port that's going to have this handshake. And then once we know we're looking at something with this handshake, then we can start applying our um, either our bin pack or our spicy uh, analyzer to it. Uh, something I do want to point out in here, i um, not sure if you can see my mouse, but it would be like, let's see, numbers uh, 377 through 380. You see TLS in there. That's actually a cross open VPN, which is pretty interesting. That's one of the interesting things about the protocol is um, it's so far in the bin pack version, I'm able to parse this out and feed it to the SSL uh, protocol analyzer. And in the spicy version, it's currently in the works. So it should match it as soon as we get some of the um, TLS and SSL stuff written on the spicy side. But when you have that, you can actually see the server certificates and so forth that are sent. And you can start doing some figure printing with things like JA. 
So this is what it looks like if you were to do the drop down in um, Wireshark. It's not a lot of data down here, and this is a control, as you see, and this <laughs> the controls have the most amount of fields. Uh, but you can see that app code I highlighted in red there for you. That tells us what to expect later on. So when we're parsing, that's the very first thing we're looking for, and we're seeing what it is. And once we know what it is, we know what to fill out the rest of the structure as. And in this case, it's control, hard, reset, client, version 2. And I'll show you the spicy code where we can actually, I'll show you that the exact structure in there. Now, you heard me talk about HMAC. I wish I could say the OpenVPN protocol had something in there that said, hey, I'm including HMAC, but it doesn't. It just either includes it or it doesn't. And then the, uh, the two sides just kind of work out, you know, if it's configured differently, <laughs> your session's not going to work which is fine when you're a server and a client, but it's difficult when you're a parser. So what I, <clears throat> what you're gonna find out is, um, not only do we have to write a parser for this, the structure I've been talking about so far, but I have to write a parser for any time we see an HMAC in there. We might see an HMAC, we might not see an HMAC. And this thing could also go over TCP. When it goes over TCP, since it's a stream, we need to know what the packet length is, or basically it's kind of like pseudo UDP. We can. Pretend that we're seeing a uh, UDP packet by knowing what the packet length is. All right, so what's my conclusion? We have to write four analyzers. We have to write a one for UDP, one with UDP with the HMAC, and then we have to write one for TCP and then TCP with the HMAC. We do this in bin pack. There's a lot of files, and I'm not going to click into a lot of these files um, because bin pack's been around for a while, and I'm sure there's a lot of webinars on how to do this stuff. Um, there's very first thing you see there is .cc, which if you're not a C coder, um, you're gonna have to write C glue sort of between um, Zeek and the bin pack language. And you'll see <clears throat> going down here with the, the orange arrows, those are basically the four different par parsers that I wrote with the different components of each. And each one of those sort of sets up its um, uh, parsing within Zeek. And here, this is the pack files, which describe the uh, structure for the parser. And you'll see there's um, eight of them across the top to hit the di four different uh, parser. And a lot of it's just boilerplate uh, code of just setting up the parser. And the stuff at the bottom is actually stuff probably you care about the most if you're going to look into this in the future. And that's the dash defs and the dash analyzer. The dash defs is the common definitions across all these files you see across the top. So instead of defining it four different times, only to find it in one file. And the analyzer is all the logic. So if you're wondering where something is in spicy in the bin pack world, it's probably going to be in those two files that I'm pointing to at the bottom. And then if you go on the Zeek side of things, you've got events, you've got record types for going in and out of events, you got Zeek scripts. And you have DPD signature. So already, without clicking into any of these files, you can see we're talking about a lot more, a lot of logic. So let's talk about spicy in depth. So uh, earlier, heard Benjamin talking about spicy analyzers. If you were to go, this is the last time we're going to be on this slide, by the way, until I come back to the question slide. But we're going to go into this um, directory called Analyzer Protocol OpenVPN. What that's going to let us do is just click around the different files that uh, uh, the different source code files. If you can give me one second to switch my screen share. All right, now you're looking at the spicy code to open VPN specifically. And you can see just with my screen share here, we're looking at only about five files. First one we care about is going to be our signature file. And I promise you it was pretty simple signatures, and it is. Um, the 38 up front is basically the app code, and the app code was a certain number of fields inside an integer. So that's why it's not an ex exact with those app codes that we saw. But when you measure that out um, and you do the bit slicing, it's going to ma measure up with the um, uh, server or the client resets for the handshake that we saw at, the, at my wire shark example at the beginning. And what I do here is, all right, I have a signature for the UDP client, but since the HMAC has more information, uh, make the font bigger. I will try one second. I zoomed in. 
Hopefully that's a little better. All right, so the HMAC is basically the same thing. If you look at this payload, really the only difference is there's a space in here. And the space is because of that extra HMAC information that we talked about earlier. And what it does is it fires off a different, the other one, the second, second parser that we've written, the UDP HMAC version. And now TCP is, the two TCP versions are gonna basically mirror the UDP versions, but it's got the two bytes up front that is part of the length. So in our signatures, that's why we have the dots up here. But the rest of the signatures look the same as the UDP, and then they just call the TCP versions. All righty, now I'm gonna go ahead and back out now. And let's see, the next one that I usually like to look at when I look at spicy code is the EVT file, because this sort of lays out for me how things are wired together. And what this says up front to me is, all right, we're gonna, we have four different protocol analyzers. Just like my slide said, we have one for UDP, one for UDP HMAC, uh, UDP, I'm sorry, TCP without HMAC and TCP with HMAC. So that's why we have four. And each of them, um, I only, I'm you only using DPD or the, the dynamic protocol detection to parse up the information. So I'm not attaching it to any um, protocols, or I'm sorry, any port numbers or anything. And you basically, you see, um, I'm not gonna go into it, but uh, you know, Benjamin, how he was talking about, you know, the um, uh, connecting to the unit uh, to the parser. So now, so basically now the parsers connect up uh, lines one through 14. Uh, lines 18 through 22, I basically say when these different types of messages are parsed, fire off these Zeek um, events. And one thing I wanna point out um, was at the very right hand side here, you see this little helper function that I wrote, or that basically you use a helper function to take um, the information in spicy terms and put it into something nice that Zeke will understand. And that's also gonna be in one of the uh, files I'm gonna show you in a minute. So ignoring that function, everything else pretty much looks just like a Zeke function. I, and that's how you make the function, it's that simple. It's Trust me, it's not that simple and been back if you've ever done it before. So it's saying anytime we have a control message, we're gonna fire off this control message event. And same for the data message and same for the act message. And I'm gonna back up here and I'm gonna show you, um, let's see. The next one is gonna be the OpenVPN Zeek Spicy. And in here, what I said was, I went really fast over it earlier, but I said some would have data sizes and uh, uh, some control messages would have data and some wouldn't. Well, here, this kind of checks for it. And if it looks wrong, it rejects the protocol. And if it looks right, it says, all right, this thing is open VPN. And then here I'm saying, all right, if anything parses funny, reject it. Then down here, if you are interested in that function that I just talked about, these are all my helper functions in those three different uh, events. I wrote, and it basically takes the um, information in and makes a tuple, which then through Zeek magic, Spicy takes care of, will then um, make those records that are associated with my uh, events. And you'll, I will show you the definitions of those in a second, but the meat of Spicy is probably the openvpn.spicy file. This is where all the bits and bytes are laid out. Now, if you're familiar with bin pack, this should look very, very similar to the bin pack version because here we're saying, we're basically going in here and we're saying, these are our units and these units are um, uh, drawn a blank. What? They're not units, they're called something else in bin pack and I'm forgetting, but <clears throat> you can be, it, it's basically the same type of structure. If you were to look at these and you were to look at um, bin pack structures, they look uh, very, very similar. <clears throat> There's some, niceties that I love in here, like the enums, remember that, the op codes, we can actually just put the numbers in here. And then later on, when, um, let's see, when we go to open VPN record down here, we can actually say, all right, the first thing is gonna be, this is all in their technical spec, so I'm gonna gloss over it fast. These bits are the app code. Well, that's pretty cool. We can take this, take these bits and then feed them in with the dollar sign, dollar sign into app code, which is our enum. And then we're gonna get out whatever the enum is. And from 
from there on in spicy code, we can then just do uh, comparisons with enums and we can be thinking in packet terms, which for a researcher, for me, way easier than going, all right, I just got a hex, you know, whatever, zero nine. And I have to go back to my table and look it up. I actually right there in code can actually say, all right, if it's a data version two, and I don't have to worry about what the number is. All right, um, let's see. Here is just some boilerplate setting up the, um, how the uh, data units are coming in. This is the main um, VPN, open VPN record. And um, depending on what opcode it gets, it fills out the rest of the structure. So if it's a control over here, you can see it instantiates. Let's see if I scroll right, there we go. You can see it instantiates a control message. And it passes a bunch of arguments, so that way it knows exactly how to instantiate that control message. Because if we go down here, we've got our control message right here. And you can see all these arguments. It's You can kind of think of it like a function. You know, all these arguments get fi uh, filled out. And depending on what those arguments are, things happen in the parser. So one of the things I said, hey, remember this if statement? Well, here's that if statement. Remote session only happens if this packet array length is greater than zero. Real simple to do in Spicy. It's, it, it looks almost like it does when um, you're reading the um, um, technical specifications of these different protocols. All right, um, I only have a couple minutes left and I'm just gonna go through the last couple data units here. Uh, you, you remember the three, the big three that I talked about, there was control messages, there was ACK messages and there were data messages. So control message, it's right there. We can see all these different fields that I talked about on the slide. We saw the if statement that I talked about earlier. And then all of them I gave the option of having um, some kind of data. But only one, I think it was only one packet type it mattered. So that's why I had that check in uh, earlier on. The ACK message is down here. And you can see all the different fields I talked about in the slides uh, filled out there. And then the data message, remember there are two different types. Well, depending on what type it is, is V2. It either fills out that peer ID or not. So I can then use the same structure for whichever version of the data message that I'm trying to parse up which is pretty neat, saves a lot of time. The last thing I really quickly want to point into is the main.zeek, and this is all the Zeek code. So these control message structures, these are the ones that I have those little helper functions make, because if you go to the events, you can see that they're passed in as a third argument there. So basically that was the whole tuple thing that I was showing you. And that took me a little while, a little while to figure out, so, um, if you ever write these things, feel free to go in and dig up my code and um, use those helper functions. Um, <clears throat> so here's the declaration, so that way you know exactly. Um, if you know nothing else about Spicy, you want to know what are the events that Keith created, go to the the, the only Zeek uh, script in there, and they're all declared in here. So you can actually see exactly what they're going to be. And then I have some glue down here of just hooking up like analyzer ID and so forth. And with that, I think I left five minutes for questions. Let me make sure I didn't miss any slides. All right, yep, my conclusion. So bin pack, I measured the amount of lines. It was around 1600 lines of source code and it's three different languages. It's bin pack code, which sort of looks like spicy. That was the structures. And then you have some C code that's glue, and then you're gonna have some Zeek code uh, on top of that. Spicy takes, took me about 340 lines of source code, and it was just two types of code. It was just Spicy code and Zeek code. And Benjamin and Robin already did the hard work and made Spicy Analyzer, so I didn't have to worry about making anything that installed. All I had to do was make just the Spicy code. That was it. Um, and even though it's only like a four time code increase, which is good, uh, my development time went up way bigger than four times. Um, I, this the initial one took me weeks to code up because there's you have to med, you have to look at states and things and it's a lot more complicated. And the other one was sort of a weekend. I I think it took me like two maybe three days to code up, and it felt a lot more like experimentation in Python where I'm trying to figure out even if I want to make a parser yet before I want to get 
you know, elbows deep into it. And that was the nice thing about spicy is being able to just kind of screw around with the parser and go, oh, yeah, I can do this really quickly. All right. Did you find this fun? If you did, we got other VPN parsers and spicy analyzers. We got the IPsec that was just um, uh, accepted in a couple weeks ago. And WireGuard's been in there for a while. So if you're already running spicy, you've got WireGuard already detecting on your networks. And I'll just point out for completeness sake, uh, the fourth different VPN that I've been studying is going to be DTLS, and that's already covered by CoreZeek. So if you want to see all four protocols that I see on a daily basis, it's going to be OpenVPN, which I talked about, IPsec, WireGuard, and then DTLS. All right, and there's contact info. Um, probably the easiest way to get in contact for me, uh, with me is going to be on the Spicy channel in Zeke Slack. But I'm also on Twitter, and uh, feel free there are my slides. And I think I'll open up for questions. Amber, take it from here. Sure. Thank you, uh, Benjamin and Keith, for presenting. I'm sure everyone is excited about uh, what they're going to be able to do with Spicy uh, in the future. Uh, I believe there were a few questions. Some people hit me up on Slack. Um, so for those who hit me up on Slack, if you want to now either click on the speak uh, button and we can give you permission to speak or post your questions into chat. Maybe they're going to wait and hit you up on Slack. That's what I think. I, I, I didn't say it explicitly, but I'm. this is questions for Benjamin, too. Yeah, this is, I mean. All right, Pierre, I, you should be able to uh, ask your question. Hopefully. Oh, I see um, there's one in chat. It says, what is the minimum build to run? Uh, HLTO files previously had some problems with OS version and dependency ceiling and other dependencies for sensors versus build environment. <laughs> Sounds like we do the same type of work. Um, Can I should I answer that? Yeah, yeah. So it so like we had like I don't know half a year ago or something like let's say a couple months ago at least you still needed to have um, Clang installed for JIT. And we removed, so that was a hard dependency of Spice, like basically having a whole LLVM Clang toolchain available for JIT. And that's gone now for, for JITting, right? And then regarding HLTO files, you can kind of think of them as something like shared libraries. So they have, so they are not only tied to a, so they are tied to a certain Spicy version for sure, but they are also tied to the OS. So if you build something on your CentOS 4 box, no, CentOS 8 box, you can't run that on your Alpine box, for example, right? So this is not some custom bit code. This is mostly shared libraries. So you should match your, your dev and, and prod environment to, for that to work still. Yeah. But we, should, we made it much easier to install Spicy. So maybe you are, if you are able to get a um, compiler on your sensor, you should be able to actually JIT on your sensor. Yeah. yeah, and I, I have a little bit of experience in this, and if you if you um, have anything you want to share in the Spicy channel at any point, I'm, I'm happy to try to take a look. Um, so, for instance, like this in our chat room here, the OpenSense, I've been playing with this lately, and it's just free BSD appliance, and I got, I'm on the shell on there, and their claim is too old. So what I ended up doing is going to their ports, and I installed uh, Kling, I think it was 11. And once I got it installed on there, I basically took um, Zeek and Spicy and I pointed them both to the newest one and compiled them both. And then I got them running. And how did I know that? Well, that's because Benjamin has nice little scripts like this out there that I said, oh, that's the stuff I need to install. So, um, you know, if you're using um, LLVM, that's and you're using FreeBSD. That might be that might help you. That helped me on the OpenSense to try to get it working.
And for those who may not um, be on or in the Slack workspace, I am posting that invite in the channel or in the chat channel so you could join because both Benjamin and Keith hang out in that in that spicy channel. Yep, and Pierre posted a question. Says thanks for the presentation. Yep. You're welcome. Um, I'm trying to write an analyzer for. Oh God, I'm gonna. Is it Gen Geneve? I'm gonna pretend that's what it is. Very similar to uh, VXLAN. It encapsulates another protocol. I was wondering how to pass the payload of this analyzer back to Zeek. There are two answers to this question. There is the should I be passing a payload that back to Zeek, and how do I pass <laughs> the payload back to Zeek, and Technically, how to pay, pass a payload back to Zeke. If you're looking at big chunks of data, it's just a string. Um, so that's pretty simple. But if you don't need something passed back to Zeke, I probably wouldn't. So with um, all these VPN uh, analyzers, anytime there was any big piece of data, I did not pass it back to Zeke. Like the um, uh, the control messages, there was a bunch of like TLS um, certificate and setup in there. I did not send all that stuff back to Zeke because um, it's just overhead for Zeke. Um, but if it's something that you really need to do, the functionality is in there for you. And all you do is you create a string, but you're going to be sending strings that could be you know, a, cup, a couple K in size and could be many, many, many of them. And it could you know, knock down your sensor too. <clears throat> Did you have anything to add to that, Benjamin? Sorry. No, I mean, that sounds good. <laughs> And before we end today's uh, Zeek webinar, are there any more questions? We will be making this recording available. Uh, and as always, you can uh, join uh, with, with this team uh, on Slack, the mailing list, or as Keith uh, has put out his information to contact him uh, via Twitter as well. Yeah, one, one thing I'll add is um, with the tunneling, now that I'm thinking about it, I think that's along the same lines. Uh, sorry, I just had another thought. Amber, I didn't mean to change the subject, Daniel. I think that's along the Quite same lines right. of what, what we're doing with the, um, the SSL as well on OpenVPN. So um, what I plan to do, I don't know if it's going to work, but what I plan to do is hopefully – use some sort of sync or something and send the stuff that I can strip out of OpenVPN and send over to um, the SSL behind, like through Spicy, not through Zeek. So when I was saying like, should we send it through Zeek? There are instances when you should actually send something back to Zeek in the script land. And there's there are instances where you need to forward it on to something else that can par parse it. So it sounds like you might be able to send it, forward it on to something else that can parse it. And that probably is through a sync functionality and, and Benjamin might have more experience with the sinks than I do though. Yeah, I mean it depends what you want to build, right? But I mean that's certainly a way. Yeah. It's what, what it's for. Yeah. Yeah, one thing I wanted to add is look, so Ember encouraged you to join join the sleek um, the spicy Slack channel, but if you want to discuss something, come back to us. If you run into issues, come back to us. So there's and this is like a full grown, I mean, it grows into like a programming language in some way. So if you run into edge cases, let us know. We can fix the, like stuff we can fix um, often pretty easily. And we would be very happy to know what you're working on, what you run into, even if stuff works. So that's kind of hard about open source that if it works too well, you don't know that people are using it because they never complain. Right. So if you're happy, let us know as well. And I, I tend to, any of the parses are right. I try to run on. Um, several networks I have access to, so they're they're not tested in every network in the world, but at least they've they've seen three, maybe four networks before they actually get pushed out. So if you see any like false positives or you're not hitting something, um, you know, hit me up in the Slack channel, and I'll try and figure it out for you. Awesome! Thank you guys so much uh, for your time today. Thank you all for attending and. We'll have the next uh, Zeek webinar, not next week, but the week after uh, with Christian. Uh, he'll be speaking about the Zeek package manager. So stay tuned for more information uh, about that. Anything else you guys want to say before we 
Say goodbye to everybody. Nope. With that, have a great day.